Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome back to the ongoing Game Dev Toolbox. A look at the essential tools for game development, be it for uh, the programmers on your team, the artists, your sound producers, your game producers or designers, you name it. So we're covering the whole gamut. And today we are looking at a tool that is for both artists and programmers. Mostly artists, but programmers will uh, appreciate one aspect of this for sure. And that product is called Spine. Now, Spine is a 2D animation system. And if you've worked in 3D, the process is going to look very similar to you. If you've worked in the past in uh, animation in Flash, you're probably also going to be somewhat immediately comfortable with the way this tool works. Now, I will point out right off the hop, this is not free software. There is a price tag attached. And I'm also not going to go into an extreme amount of detail on actually using Spine because that is coming soon. I'll link it down below in the comments once I produce it. But I'm doing a more in-depth, hands-on with Spine video down the road. But that's not the purpose behind this series. This series is all about introducing you to tools, not teaching you them or going into depth with them. So this is a very surface level look at Spine. So first off, let's start with who makes it. Spine is made by a company called Esoteric Software. Uh, their website is, predictably enough, esotericsoftware.com. That's E-S-O-T-E-R-I-C, by the way, if you're wondering. And um, it's commercial software. You have to pay for it. There is a trial available. The trial is uh, save limited. Um, so you really can't use it for anything other than to test it out. Um, if you're a smaller indie development, the cost of Spine is currently $69. Um, if you're requiring some greater functionality, uh, there's the Professional Edition currently at $299. And you can see by this matrix over here uh, what that gives you. So the big difference is a lack of mesh, lack of freeform deformations, weighted mesh, IK constraints, and transform constraints. Uh, constraints basically are what you could use to create it so that your animation doesn't go wildly off course. So basically, your animation process is going to be a little bit more um, manual without having pro. And then freeform deformations allow you to uh, do exactly what it says. Use a lattice to deform uh, shapes in uh, freeform animations. It's probably not a requirement for most of you. Um, now, one other aspect of this, though, is if your company makes more than a half a million dollars a year in annual revenue, um, it's a greater price. So you got to buy the $2,200 base version and then license on a per developer basis of $259, at least currently. Uh, so there's the pricing on Spine. But keep in mind, tools that save you money are uh, save you time, if you value your time, are often easily worth the money. I can't tell you if something's worthwhile to you or not. That's obviously an independent decision. But I think Spine is priced fairly and the tiering here is reasonable. And I also feel if you're not familiar with what these things are, they are reasonable things to gate behind different versions. Most people, uh, especially just starting out, will be more than sufficient in using the Essential for the Essential license. So that's what Spine costs and who makes it. Now let's look at the part where I was talking about where programmers benefit. And that is something called the runtime. Now the nice thing with Spine, Spine allows you to create these 2D animations. We'll see it in a bit more detail in a second. But the cool thing is it also comes with runtimes that actually enables you to use these animations. Now runtimes are basically, you can think of as plugins that run inside of your code or your engine of choice. And there's a lot of game engines supported out of the box. As you can see, official runtimes listed here include Cocos 2D, 2DX, Corona, Flash, LibGDX, Love, Monogame, SFML, Starling, 3JS, Torque 2D, Turbulent, Unity, Unity 2D, 2Kit, which I think is obsolete now, and XNA. So the majority, I would fairly safe to say, of 2D focused game engines are covered on there. Um, I'm kind of shocked I don't see an Unreal Engine. I'm not sure if one's in existence, but another thing you will find is a lot of game engines actually have su uh, spine support as well. Uh, for example, Wave Engine just announced improved spine support just last week. So there's a good chance that your engine supports spine animation out of the box. Now it's possible though you're rolling your own engine or that it doesn't. Well in that case there's also generic runtimes. And these are kind of just code to get you up and going. You're obviously going to have to do that last mile thing like to, to hook it in so it works directly with your game engine. But if you're working in Flash slash ActionScript, uh, C, C++, or Objective-C, C Sharp, JavaScript, or Lua, there's a generic uh, runtime host. I believe they're on GitHub. Yeah, they're on GitHub that enables you to get up and running with your engine of choice if it's not already supported. On top, there are a number of third-party implementations that you can start and run with. So Spine is incredibly well supported, which is very cool. So if you create your, en your animations in Spine, there's a good chance that your game engine already supports it. And if it doesn't, you can extend it fairly simply using the reams of um, free and already implemented code out there. So. That's definitely a strong point, and that should make your programmers very happy. On top of that, you can also use Spine to just create sprite sheets. 
but you're kind of wasting a bit of its functionality if you do that. So without further ado, let's jump into Spine itself. Now, if you've done any 3D animation, you will immediately be comfortable with the idea of going on here. It's a bone-based, IK-driven animation system. And what it basically, uh, I won't get into what it exactly inverse kinematics is, but what you normally do in 3D is you define your mesh, you texture it, etc., and then you put bones in it. And as you move those bones, they have weight or influence, and they bring the underlying mesh with them. This is the way that 95% of 3D games are animated these days. Well, what Spine does is takes that concept to the 2D world. What you've got here is basically, it looks like one sprite, but it's not. It's actually a sprite cut up into a number of pieces. And there's an important part behind this. For example, on a normal sprite, this back arm is obscured. So what they actually have done is drawn the full back arm, as you can see right there if I select it. So if I hover here, you can see there's the back arm and there's the back bracer, like so. So what it does is it gives it that little bit extra information it needs to extrapolate and therefore make animations out of that model. So what you do is you draw your guy in 2D in pieces. So you would have your head, you would have your, so as I'm sliding through here, you can see some of the, I don't know, I think it's these ones that trigger it. So there is part of the piece, the front thigh, etc. So all of your various pieces are cut up across your mesh into different uh, shapes. And then you draw your skeleton over top of it, like we've done here. So you can see all these bo bones that are gonna influence the underlying shape. And then Spine does the rest of the magic. So this is the setup stage, and this guy is set up. Again, I'm not going to a huge amount of detail because I'm actually going to do a quick overview of Spine very, very soon. Um, on Game from Scratch. And again, I will link that down below once I have done it. Uh, but you set up your character like this. So you draw it once. You draw each piece on its own. You add the skeleton on top of it. You, you link the various pieces together. And then you switch from setup over an animation. And now you can create named animations. And if you've, again, if you've done any timeline-based animation, that's exactly what you see here at the bottom. This is your timeline. So 0 to 25 frames. So this is 24 frame animation you see here. I can just go ahead and play it. So that is a looping 24 frame animation. Each one of these is a set of keys for, you see, you can see rotations and transformations and scales, etc. All the different pieces of your, um, your uh, armature, so the, the bones and such that make up this character, can be animated. And they in turn bring and deform and shape the underlying shape. So instead of having to draw with the traditional 2D animation, this would be 25 frames of the same animation. It's very, very painful to have to do that many steps. And then once you start getting into um, another set of poses, so this is just a run cycle. You come down here, let's stop that. So you see we've got, no, no, it's all the pieces, so it's just the one animation. Now if you get into, say, you wanna go on top of that and make a jump cycle, a, um, duck, a kill, a so on. With traditional animation, you would have to go ahead and draw all those things. Now you can just manipulate your 2D object. So it's like working in a very 3D workflow, but using just two dimensions. And then when you're done, when you've got all of this worked out, you can just come back over here to the menu and export. And you can see a number of different formats you can come out of here. You can go in JSON format, binary, uh, or you can export as images. So I can bring out and actually produce an AVI of this guy if I want to, for example. Um, so then you can either, if it's just gonna be a straight sprite sheet, you'd use it traditionally however you would use a sprite sheet in your tool of choice. But if it's exported as a spine export to run in the runtime, it works on this bone-based system directly in your game. And you can take advantage of that accordingly. You could swap skins, etc. Some very powerful stuff you can do as a result. Uh, you could bind weapons, change weapons on the fly. Uh, so there's some very powerful things you could do that in normal traditional 2D animation are very, very tricky. And it's actually quite simple. Now the hardest part by far is going to be creating and setting up this armature. Now first you're gonna obviously need an artist that is capable of creating this guy in the first place. Um, the process of actually drawing the bones isn't really that hard, but it's going to be a little time consuming because you got to bind the image to the individual bones, etc. But not a huge amount of work. And then, of course, you also need to have a guy that has an eye for animation that can create each one of these frames on this timeline. You know, you do need to understand, you know, bounce and scale, the traditional animation uh, approach, but the tool makes this job so much easier for you. Um, and then the process itself. So if I wanted to go ahead and pose this guy or change this pose or whatever, I just grab the bone I want to modify and modify it. So that's kind of the IK system solving itself at work here. And there is how easy it is to actually just go ahead and change that individual frame or key 
Um, that's what that's what each one of these is called. Each one of these little dots is something called a key or a keyframe. And then what the program does is extrapolates or tweens or interpolates. It depends on really what terminology you want to use. But the simple way of defining it is you create a keyframe or an important frame. Which is basically saying at this frame do this, at this frame do this. And then what the computer does is it it figures out the the interstitial frames between them. And so it's really the computer doing a lot of the animation drunk work for you. It's actually kind of amazing if you think about this compared to like the traditional animation approach from years and years ago. Uh, this is some pretty powerful stuff. Uh, so again, I'm not going into a huge amount of detail of what Spine does. It's actually a very straightforward program. You've actually seen a lot of it, but you haven't really seen it that much in action. And I'm going to do that very shortly. So stay tuned. I will have more content on Spine specifically coming soon. And if there's something specific you want to have question about or want to see answered or demonstrated, let me know in the comments down below, and I will take that into account when I do make uh, this upcoming, upcoming uh, post about Spine in more detail. Uh, but this is Spine. It is a 2D IK animation system. It is very powerful. It has a number of runtimes for a number of game engines. So if you are looking at making like a modular 2D approach like what you see here, or 2D animation approach like you see here, definitely consider, yeah, consider checking out Spine. Uh, once again, it's made by Esoteric Software and it's a cool application. Um, stay tuned. As I said, I will show you it in more detail very soon. Well, that's it. Uh, see you soon. Bye.